Hey, what's up everyone? We got Brett here, Briggs, myself, and we're from Miles Pellisov giving you guys another Pellisov repair video focusing on the Harman Accentra Pellisov. A very stout, very well made one, and today we're going to be showing you guys how to change out the igniter. Why don't you take it away? Well, we got a good one for you today as usual. This is a finned igniter. It's like a little radiator, but this is what it looks like. And Briggs and I are going to take the old one out and put the new one in. Take your time. I know you can do this. Sometimes it takes one person can do it, but two is even better. It's You're... definitely better. Grab a buddy. <laughs> Save yourself some headache. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Follow along with us. All right. Okay, let's go. Always it's safety, safety, safety. Unplug, unplug, unplug your stove prior to doing any maintenance on this stove or any other pellet stove. And if you live in Lane Lane or Benton County, give Briggs and I a call for a service. And if you live in another state, call your local service provider. So there you go. Nope. Stop. If you like what you're seeing, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate it. Help us build the channel. So these are the tools that you'll need today. You can use an impact with a 5 16th adapter. Boom. Regular ratchet. Most people have this. 5 16th, boom. Maybe a pair of snips like this or some scissors, boom. You can use a zip tie or a little electrical tape. This could come in handy. And here it is, the Fend Igniter. Are you ready? Oh, definitely. Okay, let's do it. Bonus clip, Brett screwed up a little bit. Add this tool to the list. Just some regular flathead pliers or any type of pliers that you have because this, what Briggs will show you, we're trying to save the cradle that the Fendigniter sits in. So that will save you some money. So flathead or regular pliers, add them to your tool list. So let's go back to work. All right, ready to go? Okay, let's go. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna open up your door to your Hardman. First, Remove your ash can, set this on to the side. Right here, we're going to be focusing right here on the burn pot. Can you get that flashlight right in here? Yeah, I'll do it. Right here Perfect. We go. So right here, can you see that well? It's The igniter is going to be behind this plate within the burn pot. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to tackle, tackle these wing nets on each side. You don't have to take them off all the way, just enough where you can slide it off as so. You know, sometimes if these things are pretty tight on there, you can take some pair of pliers to give yourself a little bit more leverage. So, quick tip there. So, right in here, you see this bracket right here inside? You see that pretty well? Yeah. So, right in here, your finned igniter is within this bracket. This bracket is held up by two bolts right here. They're 5 sixteenths. So, right away, we're going to be tackling those two right here and for these ones you have to take out all the way because these are things really... here you can see it up here bring it up here yeah move this thing right here you'll be taking out these bolts right here you'll have to take them up all the way they're not like the nice uh ones with a plate you just slide off the plate these ones are actually right into the bracket that's what i'm looking so this will take a little bit of time. Sometimes that plate, or sorry, that bracket will move on you. But just after a little bit. You tell me when you want me to move down in there. Sure. You can see that thing. There. Of course. There right it is. Here. You can see part of it drop. I'm going to take this out. That's your last one. Oh, go. Sit it aside. Now they can see. And there you can see it dropped. So right here, those are the two holes for the bolt was. Tools up here. That's where it's set. We'll take this out. Just a little finagling. And we're going to hang it right here. Now, this is part one. So, this is working from the front side. And we're in the back side, where the wires are uh, for the main wire harness, is what we're going to be tackling next and kind of showing you this um, next method that's going to be a little nicer so you don't accidentally disconnect some wires and cost yourself some more time. So, stay tuned. All right, part two. Okay, welcome back, friends. Now, on the back of the stove, right here, I'll just put the light on it. You get it. 
five sixteenths, and we're going to use the impact here. So that's fine. I'm just going to take these out just gently. One, two, boom. Gosh, I'm saying boom a lot. Oh well. So anyway, the two out like this, and then gently slide out this panel and set this aside. I'll just put it on the top. Now, what's happening here is that this fin igniter is in the front and these wires are in right in the middle of the stove in the burn pot. Two male ends and then there's going to be two female ends coming from this side that connect to it. So we're going to show you a little trick. It's better to have a buddy system going on here. So I'm going to go down in here. Let's get this flashlight. Now where my finger is is the yellow and the gray wire. Now right here usually there is a rubber or plastic grommet. On this stove here it's been removed, not the end of the world. So anyway we want to free up the yellow and the gray wire. So here, let's see if we can, can you get it pretty good still? Oh yeah. Or I may have to do it like this. It's tough. So anyway I'm going to free up this gray and yellow wire. Now here, Crazy Brett's trying to twist it. It's not going to happen. Know why? Because it's a zip tie. So if you have some snips like this or some scissors, you want to take this off. But be very careful. Take your time. I don't want to snip the wiring. I want to just cut this off. There we go. It's off. So what I'm doing is here it is this is the grommet this actually goes into that hole in there so somebody at one point changed this and left the grommet out which is which is fine so I want to free up everything here so I've got all this these wires here I want a little bit of length just like so so what we are going to do this is a buddy system here the yellow and the gray wire, I'm going to be feeding them inward. And Briggs, on the next scene, you can see he'll be pulling the igniter outward. So see us on the next scene. All right, now if you're on this end, what you're going to be doing as the other person is funneling the wires, you're going to be slowly pulling the wires. So if you want dad if you get behind the stove you can start funneling those wires so we're going to do the yellow and gray and i'm going to feed them towards you and you remember why this is a buddy system was Be that because what happens is where briggs's hand is on that igniter what most people do is pull it out and they yank it and then what happens is, is both the male and female connectors come apart in the middle of that burn pot. And then you got to try to fish it out of there. And good golly, what a train wreck. So here we go. And, I'm we, gonna, and we want to prevent that. So uh, this, is, this is our advice. <laughs> so I'm going to just kind of feed both the yellow and gray towards you. That's about two inch. And right there, a little bit more. And right there, you can see the gray and yellow wire right here in the two connections. And I like pulling out just a little more so when you get your next uh, new igniter hooked up, hey, you got a little bit more room to work with. So, with that in mind, I take one connection, boom. Take the other connection, boom. And right there, folks, pull the igniters out. All right, so let's uh, put our new igniter in to this cradle. Now folks, you can buy a new cradle if you want, if you want things to go a little bit more seamlessly, but these cradles, they're usually in still great condition, so if you want to save some money, uh, we'll show you how to reuse this. So basically what we're going to be doing, keep things in line, remember how you take them out because that's going to be really important. You see these two tabs right here? We're going to be taking some pliers and we're going to be straightening this out so we can take this tab off. So right now these tabs are twisted so it's not going to come off that easily so this takes maybe just a little creativity Let's see if i was lucky there boom so 
this came off just like this I'm going to keep it right there for memory because if you start putting it in different positions it may not put on as nicely so right here this old igniter is going to come off just as so and set that to the side now you can take your new one since you are going to be working backwards now sometimes these new igniters they may not fit in just perfect so you might have to bend it just a little bit to put it back on now if that's the case sometimes putting on this part can be a little bit of a pain but with a little bit of creativity and some elbow grease you'll be able to put this on so right there these ones instead of just being straightened in I had to bend it a little bit more in and then this plate was able to be put on great so when you get to that just take those pins again twist them just a little bit you don't have to over tighten it just as so if you start over tighten it you may twist it all the way off and then you really start damaging that bracket but all you need to do is just bend it a little bit right there hold and this bad boy is ready to be put back in very nice all right everyone so we're going to be putting our igniter back so what we're going to be doing we're going to be connecting our wires here it does not matter which is which as long as you make those connections solid so making sure the middle male piece definitely goes in the middle and doesn't get all well put on wrong so basically right there we have a solid connection if you have a friend you then can work together and start funneling the wires backwards so dad if you want to start pulling the wires gently i can start following them in so I'm going to slowly start, just gently, work as a team, the yellow and the gray, and I'm pulling backwards a little bit. I got a little tension right there. That's okay. Can okay. you say a little better? Got a little tension. Just tell the person in the front there just to go easy. So I'm feeding it back a little bit here in my hand. Feeding it back one another inch. And hold up there. So these wires, there's essentially, there's going to be the area where you're going to be tucking it back more on the left side and there's a channel right there and there's a number of parts at that connection those two wire connections can get caught so that's why communication here is good or if you're doing this by yourself just do it little bit by little bit because if you yank it and it's disconnected in the middle guess what well you get to go around too when we want to avoid that so proceed keep right. on going and right here we're going to be lining these holes up with those holes up and so as he's pulling, this solid part right here, the more, well, more stiffer part of the wire harness, you might have to bend just a little bit. And then right there is when we're able to get the bracket up there. So right about there. Now at this point, this is a very odd angle. But what you're going to do you're going to tell your buddy just to take five just for a little bit and you're going to pre-thread this cradle now here in the shop it's a little easier of a, easier for us because we can see and it's a little bit better of an angle when you're at home this is going to be a lot lower to the ground and so this may take just a little bit more time and patience for you all. But again, with the term patience, you take your time, this job will get done smoothly. So once you have a good pre-thread right there, you're gonna take your 5 16 you're gonna go back in here and just tighten it. Make it all good and snug. And once we finally get this in there where it's holding and it won't move we can do our double checks so right here what i'm going to do i'm going to go in here i'm going to feel this wire and what i typically like doing this wire here folks is very heat resistant but i like to kind of give it a little bit more space on this right side where it's not really touching much of the burn pot walls it's kind of right there i want to double check this bottom wire that's going through the channel right in there 
and the you want to make sure the heat resistant wires are on this side within the burn pots now if you don't thread this right within the channels and you have your connection where the yellow and gray wires are and if they're in the burn pot that part is less heat resistant and those things can melt and get destroyed within this burn pot we've seen that happen we've seen that happen one time actually yeah and so when those connections are disturbed your igniter's not going to work right so just a heads up make sure you get this wiring all good and dandy can you pull any more on the wire harness right there is that pretty snug right there yeah good? i'm not going to pull any more That's perfect pretty. right there so good communication we're good there the brackets on with the cradle and we got our wiring set connections are still there we're then going to replace this plate as so and we're just going to tighten the wing nuts and right then and there your igniter's in the front part here is done but real quick we're going to show you in the next scene just kind of do a little clean up in the back so keep things a little bit organized okay so this is the back here so this is as far as we're going to pull the yellow and the red wire that's it so this is the grommet so you will find this and so i'm going to scoot this grommet up just gently just it just slips right through you can see right there just both these wires but i'm not going to force them i'm just going to bring that grommet all the way through because you probably will have a grommet on your stove so i'm going to bring it all the way up here and i'm going to push it back in the hole just like that and so the only thing I'm going to do now, I mean, you could use zip ties or you can use uh, electrical tape, whatnot, but I want these wires away from this exhaust. So however you want to do it, you just, you know, you don't really wing it, but just keep the wires away from the exhaust. So I'm going to bring them right in a bunch here. And this is a big old, my goodness, Briggs, this is a, this zip tie is ginormous. But that's okay. If you have one, great. If not, you know, electrical tape works great too. So you just want to just tighten this up gently, not too much. But see as it sits like that, it's away from the exhaust. And so your scissors or snips, go ahead, be real tidy with this and just take it off like that. And so when I do that, bim, bam, boom, here's the panel. You want to line up this with this and it's like a channel. And up here and a channel and I'm going to push it in gently until these two holes here align up which are 5 sixteenths and you can use a regular ratchet we're going to use an impact here to speed up the process process however you want to say it and so I'm just, I'm just going to go real gentle on this I'm not going to torque the heck out of this thing no way just nice and easy and just like that and we'll see you in a few minutes and hey everyone that is it hopefully this video has been helpful and you know what if you really want to support us please like share comment subscribe helps us a lot well to help you guys too and so you know you got your igniter in your stove should be working and you know what well yeah you know what 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 is it <laughs> what? real quick you, know, I th you said it well you know the main thing here is to save you your family and your friends some money and hopefully these videos have, are, are helpful to you all and down the line briggs and i are going to have different brands different models and we're going to keep them common so we really appreciate you viewing in with us today and we'll see you on the next one thank you for sure thanks guys